A fiery horse with the speed of light, a cloud of dust, and a hearty Hyo Silver. The Lone Ranger. Before this exciting adventure, a word from our sponsor. General Mills, makers of Cheerios, the oat cereal that's ready to eat, Benny Crocker mixes, and Wheaties, the breakfast of champions. Present by special recording, The Lone Ranger. Did you ever talk to your grandmother or your mother about what it used to be like to bake an angel food cake? Before there was a Betty Crocker angel food cake mix, that is. Well, they used to have to take 13 eggs and separate the whites from the yolks. Can you imagine all that bother? Over a dozen eggs. Angel food cakes took hours then, and I guess that's why they only bake them for very, very special occasions. But now, you can have big, delicious angel food cakes all the time. Mm Mmm, it's so easy when Mom uses Betty Crocker angel food cake mix. That's the mix with the whites of 13 farm-fresh eggs right in the package. Mom just adds water and your favorite flavoring for a perfect cake. Angel perfect every time. Cake after cake after cake. A high light every day is party day kind of cake. And it's guaranteed perfect by Betty Crocker of General Mills, Minneapolis. I hope Mom bakes lots of Betty Crocker angel food cakes at your house. They're so melt in your mouth good. With his faithful Indian companion, Tonto, the daring and resourceful mask rider of the plains led the fight for law and order in the early western United States. Nowhere in the pages of history can one find a greater champion of justice. Return with us now to those thrilling days of yesteryear. From out of the past come the thundering hoofbeats of the great horse, Silver. The Lone Ranger rides again. Come on, Silver. Let's go, big fellow. Are you silver? The courtroom was crowded, and a low murmur ran through it as Jonathan Steele rose to his feet and faced the judge. Jonathan, I represent Rex Bradford, the deceased's only brother. Now, it's our contention that the terms of this will prove that the late Robert Bradford was of unsound mind when he made it. We ask that the court declare the will invalid and that the estate be awarded to my client as Robert Bradford's only legal heir. The court intends to investigate the validity of the will. Are the witnesses present? Yes, sir. Here they are, Arthur Jensen. Here, Your Honor. You swear to tell the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth, so help you God? I do. You knew the late Robert Bladford? Yes, sir. We were friends and neighbors for nearly ten years. I own the spread just below his on Crystal Creek. Do you remember witnessing his will? I do. When I got to his ranch that day, he was sitting at the window looking out at the creek. He had the will folded up in his left hand. He told me to sit down. Worried about what Rex will do if he gets his hands on this ranch. I guess there's no doubt about what he'll do. He's talked about it enough. He'll damn Crystal Creek and make us pay so much for water rights that we'll have to sell out to him. Yes. Even if he is my brother, I must admit that he's greedy and unscrupulous. I'd like to be sure that he doesn't get the ranch. But you've got nobody else to leave it to, have you? Yes, I have. And I've made a will. Judd, I'm leaving my ranch to the Lone Ranger. Judd, you're not. Had Robert Bradford ever seen the Lone Ranger? Why, no. Not that I know of. Have you ever seen the Lone Ranger? No. No. No, of course you haven't. Neither you nor anyone else. And why? Because there is no such person. Does counsel intend to prove that the Lone Ranger doesn't exist? No one has ever seen him. Senor! Senor! Order! Order in the car! Oh, senor, Your Honor, it is not true what the Senor has said. Pancho has seen the Lone Ranger. 
Are you Pancho? Si. Pancho Gonzalez. We'll listen to your testimony. Swear him in. You swear to tell the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth, so help you God? Si. Take the chair. Now, where was it that you saw the Lone Ranger? It was long away from here. I worked for Senor Colfax then, near San Antonio. How did it happen? I, I tell you. One night I walked from the town. I feel so bad I sit down beside the trail and put my head in my hands. All of a sudden I hear horses. I look up and see a big white horse and a paint. Caram, it is a masked man who rides a white horse. Oh, 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 well, suppose we give you a ride home, Pancho, and let Tano have a look at your boy. Ah, that good idea. Come on, I'll give you a hand up. Oh, see, yes, see, si, senor. There you are. Come on, Silver. Come on, scout. And then our cabin, the Indian look at the boy. Oh, in plenty sick, Kimasabi. My wife, Maria, she cry a little. Pancho, if only we can take him home. Where is your home, Pancho? In the mountains. Near Las Cabras. It is across the river in Mexico. It's good for boy to go to Mountain Kimasabi. Well, why don't you take him there, Pancho? Oh, it is impossible. He and one little prayer at the shrine of the Madonna. And I know me where will be better. Now, just pack up your things and be ready to leave in the morning. Tato and I'll be here early. Santa Maria. Gracias. A prayer has been answered, Pancho. A prayer has been answered. Order in the court. Order. And this masked man kept his promise to you? Si, senor. He and the Indian bring the wagon, and they travel all the way to Las Cabras with us, into the mountains. I remember the day we reached the shrine. Maria kneel and pray. The masked man bow his head. Oh, si, senor, as I have seen the Lone Ranger... What do you think of that testimony, Steve? Does your honor consider the testimony of an obviously superstitious P incompetent? Any more questions, Steele? Yes. <clears throat> yes, I have. Uh, Pancho, you've testified that a masked man helped you get home to the mountains where your boy regained his hair. Now, what makes you think that masked man was the Lone Ranger? He wore a mask. His horse was called Silver. His friend's name was Tondo. Uh-huh. Did he ever tell you he was the Lone Ranger? No. That's all. If Pancho does not say his name is Pancho, he's still Pancho. Uh, you've answered the question. That's enough. That is all, Pancho. Si, si, senor. Your Honor. Order. Order in the court. If there are any further disturbances, I'll have the court cleared. Your Honor, I have no intention of creating a disturbance. But I feel that my testimony should be heard in this case. Did you know the deceased? No, Your Honor. My testimony concerns the Lone Ranger. And I'll let you decide for yourself whether I'm either simple, uneducated, or crazy. I don't see why we shouldn't hear what you have to say. Sit down, please. Well, thank you, Your Honor. You swear to tell the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? I do. What is your name? Benjamin Gregg. Your occupation? The past five years I've been a rancher. And before then? United States Army. I served with both McClellan and Grant. After the war, I was in command of all the troops in the New Mexico and Arizona territories. Uh, you must be General Gregg. I am, Your Honor. I see. And what is it that you wanted to tell us, General? Simply that I knew the Lone Ranger. Proceed, General. Very well. My son was killed by the Apache two years ago. He was a captain in the cavalry station at Fort Webster in Arizona. When the news reached me, I went out there at once. I borrowed a horse at the fort and rode out to Red Rock Canyon where my son was buried. I reached the canyon just as it was getting dark on the second day. 
I shouldn't have, but I lit a fire and I was sitting beside it, thinking, dreaming perhaps. But I suddenly realized there were men near me. I looked up, shadows all around, and then Crazy Wolf himself stepped into the circle of light around the campfire. His carbine was leveled at my heart. Ah, this good. Crazy Wolf know you. You general. You prisoner now. We'll continue our Lone Ranger adventure in just a moment. Diving Doris is 13, and she is a diving queen. She can do a flip because she knows she's got go power from Cheerios. Yes, she's got go power. There she goes. She's feeling her Cheerios. Cheer- Cheerios. That's a mighty good idea for you. Just make sure you eat a big bowl of Cheerios and milk every breakfast and you'll get go power too. Because a Cheerios breakfast is loaded with proteins, vitamins, and minerals. The very things that help build healthy bodies, strong bones, good red blood, and muscles. Why, they'd be the sort of breakfast you'd go for even if they didn't taste so good. And they do taste delicious. Cheerios are a real oat cereal, already cooked with that delicious toasted oat flavor. So that's for you. Swell-tasting Cheerios and milk for Go Power. Eat them every morning and you'll hear... She's feeling her Cheerios. Now to continue. The courtroom was silent, tense, and expectant. As General Gregg described his capture by the renegade Apache, Crazy Wolf. I expected to be killed on the spot, but Crazy Wolf had other plans for me. I was taken to his camp high in the hills. I was bound hand and foot and thrown into a teepee. I lay there all during the next day. That night, there was a war dance. Finally, most of the Indians rode out of camp. There was a guard sitting in front of the teepee. He was drunk, and it wasn't long before he fell asleep. Camp was quiet. Then I heard a sound at the rear of the tent. There was a knife slitting the deer skin. Two men crawled in through the opening. They crawled past me and onto my guard, and then... All right, Tonto, drag him inside. Now that's far enough. Bind him and gag him. Yeah, time to do that. I'll have you free in a minute, General. Who are you? A friend. Are you wearing a mask? Yes, all set, Tonto. Uh-huh. Lead the way. I'll follow with the general. Uh-huh. We crawled through the opening in the rear of the teepee and then ran to the cover of the woods. The camp was high in the hills, and instead of starting down, we began to climb. And finally, I should judge a thousand feet above the Indians' camp, we came to a small clearing. There were three horses there. White stallion, a paint, and my own horse. The one Colonel Lacey had given me at the fort. Why, that chestnut's mine. Yes, General. Otto brought him up here while the war dance was going on. Well, I'm not sure that I can find my way back to the fort, but with a few directions... We'll I... show you the way when the right time comes. But not tonight, General. There's too much chance of running into Crazy Wolf and his raiding party. Now we'll wait here until tomorrow night. <laughs> waited all that day, but as soon as it was dark, we started down the wooded mountainside. Come on, sir. Come, sir. We passed the Indian encampment safely, and finally we reached the valley. It stretched a hundred miles to the north and south. All right, let's go. Easy, steady, big foot. One, two, there. One, scout. It was twenty miles across the valley to the eastern hills, and only an occasional sandstone butte broke the level surface of the basin. The fort was beyond the hills. There was a full moon, but we saw no Indians, not until we had nearly reached the far side of the valley. 
Then we saw them heading straight for us out of a wooded draw. I heard shots. Something hit me, and that's all I remember. opened my eyes, I was lying close to what seemed to be a wall of rock. The mask man was only a few feet away, firing at something or someone below him. That takes care of them for a while. Where are we? On top of one of the buttes, the one we just passed when the Indians saw us. But how could you, how could we climb to the top? Look, the west slopes crumbled away. I carried you up here while Tonto held them off. As good as a fort... What about Tano? I opened fire as soon as I got up here. He got away with the horses. He'll bring us help from the fort. That's a long way. Yes. Are we surrounded? Now we are. But all we have to do is keep them from climbing up here. And what's that? More Indians, a lot of them. I think they've brought Crazy Wolf. I must have been unconscious for a long time. Early morning. How about ammunition? Enough for this charge. Are they still coming? Yes. How many bullets? Six left. You have to come up single file. I'll wait for them. Six bullets, and then... The first one. The second. Did I really hear that? A bugle. Yes, you did. Can you see anything? No, I... Yes, General. The cavalry... There's Tonto riding at the head of the column. Looks like a whole troop. Heaven be praised. And that was the end of Crazy Wolf's uprising, Your Honor. And that was how I happened to meet the Lone Ranger. <laughs> I sincerely hope that applause was not meant for me. General, did the scout who rescued you from Crazy Wolf ever tell you he was the Lone Ranger? Well, no, he didn't. That's all I wanted to know. That's all that's relevant to this case. The court will decide the relevance of the general's testimony, counsel. Yes, Your Honor. But I must plead that no evidence has been introduced which establishes in any way... That there actually is such a person as the Lone Ranger. My contention is that there is not. And I ask you to declare Robert Bradford's will invalid. You'll have my decision tomorrow. Court is adjourned. The judge had his supper at the hotel that night and then walked through the quiet back streets of the town to the little white cottage where he lived alone. When he reached it, he settled himself behind his desk and studied Robert Bradford's will. He studied it for a long time. Then his head nodded. He leaned back in his chair, and in another moment he was asleep. As he slept, he dreamed. He was with Pancho crossing the Rio Grande and riding on toward the mountains of Las Cabras. He was with the general in Crazy Wolf's camp and on the high butte in the valley. And then clearly he heard a voice. In the name of justice, Your Honor... Slowly, he returned to consciousness. He opened his eyes. Was the door of the cottage open? Was there a shadowy figure standing in the doorway? Was the door closing now? A horse outside, and then... Am I still dreaming? And then the judge saw something shining on his desk. Something made of silver. He leaned forward and picked it up. In the name of justice... On the following morning, the judge rapped for order in the courtroom. The court has reached a decision in the case of Robert Bradford's will. Counsel for Rex Bradford has argued that because there is no such person as the Lone Ranger, the deceased has given evidence of being of unsound mind at the time the will was executed. In the opinion of this court, the contention has not been proved. Is the court ruling that the Lone Ranger does exist? The court is ruling that the Lone Ranger may exist. 
that the deceased was of a sound mind and that the will is valid. In that case, will the court set a time limit during which the Lone Ranger must claim his inheritance? If there is such a person, do you honestly expect him to walk into a court of law and identify himself? I haven't finished, Counsel. The phraseology of the will is not exact. So it is also the duty of this court to interpret it. The intention of the deceased becomes important. From a careful study of the document, the court has decided that the will merely sets up a trusteeship. That the Lone Ranger has been appointed to administer the estate for the public good. If the Lone Ranger is not available, then it is also in the power of this court to appoint another executor. General Gregg, will you accept the appointment? Yes, Your Honor. File the will. Oh, General, I'd like to see you in my chambers, please. Very well, Your Honor. After you, General. Thank you. Your Honor, I'm a little disappointed. Why? Well, you've managed to save the small rancher's water supply. But it was by some legal interpretation that I don't understand exactly. It was perfectly sound. But don't you believe that I was telling the truth? Of course I do. It, look at this. A silver bullet. That's right. Where did you get it? <laughs> Who can tell, General? Perhaps I, too, have had the honor of beating the Lone Ranger. copyrighted feature of the Lone Ranger Incorporated is produced by Trendle Campbell Muir Incorporated. The part of the Lone Ranger is played by Brace Beamer. Your announcer, Fred Foy. Listen to the Lone Ranger brought to you by special recording Mondays through Fridays at this same time.